Hey guys and welcome. It is Friday night with beef and we are hanging out for the kitchen edition tonight. Getting ready to showcase some amazing stuff tonight is Northwoods Pot Roast. And I'll tell you, how's the house smell, Ann? It smells really good. It smells really good. And she's not saying that like she's surprised. She's just, I don't normally cook in the house, right? I do a lot of this stuff out on the grill. So tonight we're hanging out in the house. The oven is going to shut off here in a minute. So we'll lose that loud noise, but be sure to check in and be sure to say hi. Uh, leave us a comment so we know that the comments are working and set and ready. Any questions, comments so far, bud? All right, very cool. The big goose egg so far, right? All right, so let's take a minute. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Chef Jason, working with the Colorado Beef Council tonight. Uh, and we have been doing these throughout, I guess for the last, what, eight or nine months? Seems like it. Yeah, yeah. we've been doing Fridays with beef. We are on our one a month schedule now. So this is our October one. And you're in luck because next week is our November one. So we've got a lot of cool stuff to get you ready for holiday uh, appetizers next week. So as always, we'd love to say a huge thank you to all of our farmers, ranchers, and producers that work so hard to put Colorado beef in our fridges, in our bellies, in our freezers, on our tables, and more. Be sure tonight you can head to cobeef.com. That's Colorado Beef Council website. Uh, there is a map there that's going to show you how to buy local beef. It's going to uh, give you some producers and ranchers that are all set and ready to fill your fridges and get that beautiful Colorado beef uh, in your bellies, which is great. So cobeef.com, you can grab the uh, beef locator map. And then also there's going to be a tab up top called cooking. You're going to be able to find this recipe right here and a lot of other fun recipes and videos that we've done. Uh, we just finished editing. What was the video I did last week? Oh, the uh, Korean style short ribs. So we were just finishing up editing that video. That's gonna be, oh, tell you what, talk about a crowd pleaser. But this is definitely time to hunker down, grab your favorite blanket uh, and mm -hmm. have a blast because pot roast in a big dish on the couch. We're allowed to eat on the couch? No. We are not allowed to eat on the couch, but we're going to anyways because it's pot roast. Any, anybody checking in saying hi? Who do we need to say yeah, hi to? Yeah, we've got lots of people. I love it. Lola Rusin. Hello, Lola. Susan Albrecht. Hello, Susan. Cheryl Stolly. Cheryl. Uh, Kim Wolfram. Nice. Cheryl Kim DiPaola. Wolfram. Nice. Uh, Trey Scott. We got a lot of people. So, yeah, we got, yeah. I love it. Any comments yet? Not yet. All right, Tammy said she's on your phone if you need, if she needs any questions. Hey, leave us a comment. Someone drop us a comment and just say hi. Uh, we want to make sure everything is running and up and, and getting set. All right, let's talk ingredients tonight. Come on in here. We'll do a little ingredient flyover. Um, the recipe calls for leeks, right? And you're going to use the white part of the leek um, and just the faint green part. Couldn't find leeks, but I'll tell you what I substituted was a, um, a sweet yellow onion. That works out fantastic. Then we've got carrots. Uh, and here's a little secret. I didn't peel the carrots. I wash them really nice. I leave the peel on. I think the best part of the carrot uh, flavor comes from that peel. We've got uh, red bee potatoes, just some nice, easy red bee potatoes. And then everyone's favorite, parsnips. So parsnips are actually in the carrot family. They're really, really super closely related to the carrots. Uh, what I love about parsnips, when you cook them, they tend to be a little bit sweeter. It almost concentrates some of that sugar. But when they're in this state and you peel them and get ready to chop them, just have a beautiful, vibrant, almost like lemony carrot finish to them. That is uh, pretty solid. All right. A little bit of beef stock as well for us tonight. That is going to be kind of the liquid getting us set. And then here's the star of the show right here. It's the beef. So we've got a nice shoulder roast. We went about, this is about two uh, 2.2 pounds, so about two and a quarter pounds. Recipe calls for two to two and a half pounds. So we uh, have that set right there. We've got one going for you already. So, yes, I can okay. see. Yeah. Did you see them say hi in the comments? Yes, just oh, okay. no questions. No, 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 but what you're seeing comments come up, right? Yeah. Facebook finally fixed it for us, so we're super excited. So we get to see all your comments now. Before we had this cool relay system going on from one person to another to us, uh, but we're psyched that we get to see everything up and running. Okay, you guys, you want to sneak peek? Should we sneak peek it? All right, here's what we have going in here. This is the finished, almost finished dish, right? We've got a little gravy to make right there. The beef is tucked under there beautifully. Got those veggies going, but that's your quick sneak peek. We're gonna show you real quick now how we get to that process. Are you ready? All right, and if you wanna come in up close. So we've got the chuck roast, right? We've got that beautiful shoulder roast. And I went for 
I wanted a little bit of fat. I'm okay with that. I wanted to get uh, just a little bit of marbling. I wanted it to be just perfect and wonderful and fantastic. So what I'm going to do, I let this rest just a little bit, right? This has been out for about 15 minutes or so. We'll get that out of here. Why? Uh, just to soften it up a little bit. I don't like to take it right from the fridge when it's, you know, 36 degrees and, and sear it. I like it to be relaxed a little bit so things kind of open up and, and do their magic. A uh, couple options, right? Salt and pepper. Always fantastic. You could do, I've got some garlic there too. You could do salt, pepper, garlic, rub that on there. So really pick, I think, your favorite um, seasoning, what you think works best for you. Uh, and then what I like to do is give it a season while we preheat the uh, Dutch oven. We're going to do it in a Dutch oven tonight on the stovetop. You could do it in the Dutch oven in the oven. You could do this on your grill. You could do it on your smoker. It's a versatile recipe. That's definitely... Um, one of the good things about it. And the nice thing is, hey, pot roast with veggies and potatoes today, tomorrow, pot roast sandwiches, right? Pot roast sliders, more pot roast, pot roast in a cup with mashed potatoes. Ooh, yeah. Okay, there, there we go. go. All right, I got this. You hit a winner. Trying to, I gotta, you got to know your audience, right? Okay, so we season it. We're just going to let it go for a minute. We're going to let that seasoning kick in. Uh, and then carefully, we'll get that Dutch oven lid off. I preheated this, right? Because you want to make sure that that cast iron takes a little bit of time to get hot. So... Uh, we'll go ahead and add some oil in the bottom. Not a lot, right? We're not looking for a fire. We're not looking to have a ton of grease splattering. We just want to get some oil in there to get it started. Now, here's the best part. Listen, the start of that sear. That's Oliver apparently coughing up his tennis ball. That's awesome. Good thing I called that out, right? All right. So we get a nice sear going on right here. And that is... We're going to sear it now for about five minutes a side. I want to get a nice little bit of crust on there. I want to get it all set uh, and ready to go. Make sure that that sear is coming out beautifully because that's really kind of the start of that uh, foundation of flavor that gets us where we want to go. Also, important, long pair of tongs. Long. Give them a couple clicks, a couple test clicks to make sure that they're good. All right. And all if right. you have any questions or comments, shoot them over to us. We will get those answered for you got anything bun uh no we just have a couple more people to say hello to Let's do uh it. darren edwards and luke arnold are watching i hey, like luke. it hi luke uh, hi carla Vera. booth is watching cancel very. and michelle lehman very cool good to see everyone happy friday night <laughs> hope everybody's got plans maybe for tomorrow a little trick-or-treating or a little candy eating well i mean oh like, that was a, we rhymed no <laughs> nice job <laughs> good job we actually <laughs> bought the um halloween candy but we have a great secret we don't have any young kids in our neighborhood, right? It's all older kids in high school. So we just buy the candy, shut the light off, put the candy in a bowl, and then Annie and I just make circles through the kitchen <laughs> and the living room. And we trick or treat, we give each other candy. It's pretty cool. We've been doing it for years. All right, come here. Check this out. So here's what we're kind of looking for. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful crust. So carefully, carefully, because we're in a cast iron, and we don't want that grease to come back. But look at that. Beautiful crust in here. Like I said, this... This is totally the foundation of flavor. This is what gets everything set and ready to go. And we, again, we want to sear this off about uh, three to five minutes aside just to get it nice and hot. We've got the cast iron hot um, and set and ready to go. Hi, buddy. Nice to see you tonight. Hey, Travis. All right. We've got that all set. Now, here, let's do a couple little bit of prep things, bud, while we're kind of waiting. We'll just let let's that Say finish. hello to Suzanne as well. Hi, Suzanne. Good to see you. Who else did you say? Travis? Hi, Travis Jett. Hi, Travis. Nice to see you. And Gary Moyer. Gary Moyer. Down we the got road. everybody. We got everybody. All our friends are so here So you tonight. have this vented why? Uh, I'm just, I'm not trying to build up. Okay, so when you close it, it builds up steam. The steam sits on the lid, and then it psh, psh, drips in there and splatters. So if I leave it vented, it evacuates some of that steam out. It kind of rolls itself out. So we have less splatters of um, steam balls dropping down into the <laughs> grease. Somebody's waiting. Yeah, Oliver's waiting Scooby for me to drop something. Well, I dropped rutabaga or uh, parsnip earlier, and he was not having it. So all I'm doing here, guys, is just cutting these in half. We're getting these potatoes just split in half. If they're big and you're worried about it, you can wedge them. But I'll tell you what, uh, on the stovetop, we're, we're in a good place with this, so I'm not too worried. We've got that beef sauteing off. We're just trying to get a nice little crust going on there. And then parsnip time, bud. So I'm just peeling these Why guys. Why are you going to peel these, but you didn't peel the carrots? Uh, parsnip, I don't like the parsnip skin. It's a little bit thicker uh, and a little more stringy. This is a little more fibrous, I guess would be the best word. Uh, but carrot, man, I'll tell you what, unpeeled carrots are the bomb. Yes, ma'am. Manuel Lopez Del Rio wants to know if you 
can tell us where to find Argentinian style cuts? Um, geez, I don't know. Manuel, that's a really good question. Um, if you'll do me a favor, Manuel, send us a, a private message on Facebook to the Beef Council and I will, uh, I'm going to ask a couple of my, I have a couple Argentinian friends. I will message them and ask them where they can find some of those cuts. So uh, go into Facebook, shoot us a private message and we will definitely do our best to get you connected. But great question there. So, all right. So we just get these guys peeled. Uh, like I said, I'm peeling these because this skin tends to be a little bit more fibrous than carrots. Uh, and I just don't want that, I don't know, I don't want chewy, stringy skin, right? All right, check this out. Let's see where we're at here. So carefully, I always turn that lid away. But see, this is why we vent it. There's no moisture on this lid. So all the moisture kind of came out, did its thing. I'm going to go again, just get one more little sear. Look at that crust right there. Look at that, look at that. Isn't that perfect? It is. Like, so it nice, smells right? Good too. All right, now we'll finish up on the parsnips here. So here's what I do. I'm going to cut off the big ends, just the very end of it. Okay, and I'll snip off just this little part here. And now I'm just cutting like random size pieces, bud, until I get to the big part where I'm going to split it and then just make some cuts like that. All right, so I try to keep them, you know, roughly the same size when I can uh, and get them all set. You ready for that again? Yep. Can you see? So baby cuts, baby cuts, baby cuts, baby cuts. When you get to the end, Carefully split that guy and then keep your digits out of the way. No need for stitches. Or, or blue latex glove. What? There's, no, there there's no blue latex glove I chunks in this batch. You gotta watch it. All right, so we'll cut these guys down. Again, split it. These two look a little big, so I'm actually going to split those two. But I like to get them cut roughly all the same size because uh, that's just, it just ensures they cook evenly and they cook better and we're in a happy place. So. All right, so what I'm going to do, I have, the, I have the flame shut off right now, right? Because I'm actually just bringing the temperature down a tiny bit in here. What do you have it on? I just turned it to low really quick and this because oh. I, I didn't want it to be so hot, splattering, they couldn't hear. Here's what we're going to do. I am, I'll tell you this, the recipe is super versatile. I actually doubled the beef stock because I wanted a little bit more gravy at the end. So uh, it calls for a cup. I added two because I wanted to make a little bit extra gravy because it's pot roast and gravy, right? So I'm going to carefully pour this right to the side, like so, okay? Then we're going to cover this bad boy up. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to get this back up. We're going to wait until that, wa that stock comes to a simmer. Once it comes to a simmer, we're going to cover it. We're going to let this simmer now for two hours. Justin Wisniewski, ah, Jean Croson, Croson Red Angus. They are watching as well. Hi, Miss Jean. I think it's croissant. It's, listen, <laughs> I'm going to tell Sally to come over and take care of you. You're sassy tonight. I'll tell you what. You know, remember a few years back, I went and took pictures of those beautiful Red Angus moms? Yes. Croson, that was it. Oh. All right, so check it out. See how we're starting to get a little blah, blah, blah. That's a technical culinary term. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, you guys and let it come a little bit less active, less abusive. And then we're gonna close that, let it go for two hours. All right, so now. So come back in two hours. Yeah, and come, we'll, come back we'll in two hours and we'll catch up. So here's the deal. Just watch your stove top, right? Make sure you keep it at a simmer. If you want to, you could go into the oven, onto your grill, into your smoker. The key is adjusting the temperature of all of those cooking tools to make sure this stays at a simmer. Oven, if you're gonna do this in the Dutch oven, in your oven, uh, that temperature is 350 degrees, all right? This is a lot of, of stuff to go. And you'll, what you'll see is as that 350 degrees heats up, heats up, about an hour and 45 minutes, yes, this beef stock may be at a boil, but then we add the vegetables at the two-hour mark, it simmers down. Oh, <laughs> simmers down. Simmer no. down. Simmer down. Okay. So now here we are, guys, two hours, right? So, <laughs> well, this power of TV, here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna add the potatoes to the side. I'm gonna add those beautiful, oh, those parsnips smell so good. Think of parsnips like a, a fragrant lemony carrot. Let me squeeze by it, please. All right. We'll add the onions and we'll add the carrots, all right? So now we've done that. Let's say we we're, here's where we're at. We uh, seared it off and we got a beautiful sear on both sides. We added that beef stock. We brought that to a simmer. We simmered that for two hours. 
Now here we are at two hours and it is time to add the veggies. And we're gonna go back again, add a simmer for about another hour or until we get to where we're about to be here in a second. And then as always, be careful that you are not moving hot Dutch ovens by your hands. Or lighting or, anyone's towels on fire. As you notice, I've switched to my towel because this is also the time when if you have a towel hanging over accidentally, you catch things. Um, yeah, they go up in flames. All right, so always double check your Dutch oven lid to make sure that it is not too hot to handle. And then look what we've got in there. Those are some pretty Dutch ovens. They are, they're beautiful Dutch ovens. I just uh, acquired those to make sure our Dutch oven game was at an all time high. So let me clean up here super quick. You can give them a shot of that. We have anyone to say hi to or any questions, bud? Uh, just Lori Nelson joining us. Nice to see you, Miss Lori. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. So this is the finished product? This is almost finished, all right, because what we're gonna do next is make the gravy. So look at, it. here's what I'm checking. Definitely fork tender, right? Those guys come off. I mean, they come off pretty easy. I mean, seriously, they come off. They almost, they come off. There we go. Just checking these guys, make sure they're nice and fork tender. And you can see they break apart really nice. Question, babe. Kim wants to know if you can put it in the crock pot after you sear the meat. Aha, so Kim brings up a good thing too. You can absolutely crock pot this. I'm gonna tell you that, uh, put, bring it on high, get that crock pot heated up nice and hot. After you sear this off, transfer it to your crock pot. You're probably gonna add an hour to that initial time. So instead of two hours, you're looking at probably three. Uh, but definitely you can put that in the crock pot or the slow cooker, have a blast. If you're doing the uh, pressure cookers, well, I'll tell you what, you're gonna be able to reduce some of that time in a pressure cooker just because those are a little bit more efficient. So, all right, check it out, babe. So here's what we're gonna do. We look at, we take the meat, we're gonna pick that out. Now, the nice thing about this, I am not, we're not cooking this recipe to be shredded. That's not the goal. We're not trying to have shredded beef. We're trying to slice it and have a really nice pot roast. Now, two things you can do. You can strain out all the vegetables if you want, right? Uh, and make your gravy. But I just find something beautiful about making the gravy in the vegetables so they get to coat it just a little bit. So here's what we're gonna do. Go back to a boil. I have in here about four tablespoons of water, uh, six or eight tablespoons of water, uh, and I have about two tablespoons of cornstarch. Mm -hmm. This is cold water, I'm making a slurry, and what we're gonna do is get this all mixed up and then use that to thicken that gravy just a little bit. So if you look down in that Dutch oven, bud, you can see how it's pretty set, right? Mm -hmm. Starting to bubble. Yep. Got a little bit of activity going on in there. And you guys, this is great too. This is, this is such a, a fun fall dish, uh, definitely good for leftovers. But just be careful, it's a two to two and a half pound uh, shoulder roast or a chuck roast. You don't uh, wanna go much bigger. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm just pouring this in. I start off with a little bit first, right? I want the gravy to thicken, then I can always add more. The issue if you pour all of that in at once, you can't take it out. So. And now too, you can go through here and add a little bit of garlic if you want. You can season this with salt and pepper if you want. But see how the gravy's starting to thicken up now? Yeah. That is what we're looking for. And again, like I said, I really, I just enjoy having that gravy get thickened on the vegetables. Uh, make sure everything comes out really, really nice for us. So we'll let that cook for just a little bit. Yeah, hey, Brett and Dana joined us I right like at the right it. time. I like right it. in time for gravy. Well, yeah, this is gravy time, and you can go back to the beginning too and watch the beginning of this, but I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh ground pepper in there, and then we're gonna finish it with a little bit of salt. So this is done? That's done, done, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and slice that. Like I said, we're not, we didn't cook this now so that we're getting shredded pot roast, right? We cooked it so that we can have sliced pot roast. So it's just a little bit less than that, you know, 203, 204, 205 degree where you would cook it for shredding, but. All right, so let's let that go for just a minute. Do we have any questions or anyone we wanna say hi to real quick? Nope, we got everybody. All right, just a, a reminder for you too. Uh, in the description section of tonight's video, we've got the recipe for you. And then next week, we have a blast coming for you next week because uh, next week's gonna be our November live. So we're gonna talk all about appetizers, get you ready for the holidays, uh, whether you have people coming over or whether you're just having your holidays at home with your immediate family. Uh, we've got some really fun recipes for you. 
And a couple of the recipes when we were uh, on beefitswhatsfordinner.com, looking at the recipes, uh, Tammy with the Beef Cults and I were texting each other back and forth like, oh, I want this one. Oh, I want that one. So we pretty much picked recipes that made us drool, but I hope you enjoy them because we definitely uh, are going to enjoy them as well. So let me get a plate really quick. I mean, that's kind of the sophisticated way that we pick recipes, Is it dear. hot dog? No, it's not hot dogs. I did have hot dogs for lunch today, though. Because I don't get to eat hey, hot dogs Julie. much. Julie Moore? Kahi? Kahi? Oh, Julie Kahi. Nice. Very cool. Hey, did All it right. right. That looks good. So, nice and thick, right? We've got that gravy kind of where we want it. Uh, you can reduce this further if you want a thicker gravy. I'm totally happy where it's at. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is... Go ahead and cut a little piece of that off. And I'm just going to slice it through that pot roast there. Hi, Sadie. Thanks for joining. Get that all set. And then... And Jackie. Jackie, like it. All right, so what we'll do, we'll get this kind of all set like that. We haven't that's plated that's... one of these up in a while, have we, bud? Look at that. A little bit of the beautiful stuff in there. So we've got onions, potatoes, parsnips, carrots... Uh, really everything that is a just family dinner yeah right in the world everything that's good in the world a little gravy over the top and then here's your pro tip for the night because you know you just want to make sure you've got it all set how you want so we'll get that all dialed in and then the pro tip for the night if you're ready for this and you ready i'm ready a little bit of salt over the top of your pot roast and your veggies that's a lot babe it's not a lot that is it quick, painless, and easy. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. That is our Northwoods Hearty Pot Roast. Very, very easy. Again, we started off with that sear. We got that beautiful caramelization going. Uh, we added the beef stock, went for that two hours, added our vegetables, cooked it for an additional 45 minutes to an hour, then pulled the pot roast out, made the gravy with the veggies in there, got it all seasoned, and you are set and ready to go. Don't forget, grab tonight's recipe. You can go to cobeef.com. That's cobeef.com. Colorado Beef Council website. Uh, tab up top says cooking. Click on that. Get all of our recipes uh, from, what are we on? Week? This is week number 16. So you can go wow. back and look at 16 different recipes, 16 different Facebook lives, uh, and get caught up to where we're at. Next month, we're going to have a blast. Next week it is already, right? Next month. Where did October go? Yeah, I don't know. So November 6th, next week, we're going to have a blast. We are talking appetizers. We have three uh, super fun, amazing appetizer recipes for you. We'll go through those and get you all dialed in. But I'm Chef Jason Morris. And again, a huge, huge thanks to all of our Colorado farmers, ranchers, and producers. We appreciate you guys so much for never taking a day off, for loving your animals more than you love your kids. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've heard you say that. Uh, working the cut gates, doing all the great things you guys do, feeding calving everything. Thank you guys so much. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks to the Colorado Beef Council as well. We love doing these for you guys, uh, and we hope you guys enjoy them as well. So I'm Chef Jason Morris. We will see you next week. It's appetizer time with the Colorado Beef Council.